Hey everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to highlights from the 7th round of the Multiclass Endurance Championship Season 5. Round 7 took place on Los Santos GP, one of the two tracks alongside the North Loop that have featured in all five seasons of the championship, with fast cars racing around a short, technical city circuit being able to overtake or be overtaken cleanly to not lose much time was important for the outcome of the races. There are also plenty of places where costly mistakes can be made, so it's important to stay concentrated throughout the 90 minutes. GT1 drivers for this race were in the Vision, with GT2 drivers in the GP1 and GT3 drivers in the Bullet, utilising the Supercars class for this round. If you want to watch live coverage of all the races, either before or after you've watched this roundup, check the description and pinned comment that for videos that do just that, and for all the information that you need about the championship, including past seasons, full calendar, rules and regulations and more, check the description and pinned comment for all the links that you may need. So, penultimate round of the championship, there's only one more round to go after this, and this is kind of, this is where we would see championships being decided or people staking their claim to a championship and having to finish the job in the final round. When it comes to the PS4 GT2 race though, that was already decided. Obviously Ryan W1 is our champion elect for GT1 on PS4 and he had already won the championship from round 6 onwards so it was kind of you know no, no pressure going on. But he doesn't necessarily get the best start as we'll see and ends up almost at the back of the grid uh, after the first couple of corners around the first lap. Interestingly, since uh, Merfos, our GT4, our, our season four GT1 champion, uh, has entered the, the championship for the final four races, we've got, you know, two GT1 championship champions going head to head and it's very rare that we actually have that in the MCC since the, the seasons last uh, uh, so far apart. Obviously, as we see here, Brinker got up into first place after Kenzo had held it for the first couple of laps, um, and then they're having a coming in together, which then gives Merfoss that lead. And Ryan W1 is kind of at the back, having to set his sights on working his way through the field, which he does relatively well, getting some key overtakes done and showing his uh, his pace as he gets through uh, gets through the lower the lower order. That, so that gets him up to uh, second place in the race eventually when Brinker, who was in second, makes a little bit of a mistake as you see there. And then he and Merfoss, our two GT1 champions from Season 4 and Season 5, start having a race-long battle. And it was really interesting, there was lots of, uh, lots of close battling, you know, attempts at overtakes pit stops that worked their way in as well. It was a great battle over the lead for, for the majority of the race really, and it all only came together uh, and, and sort of settled itself down by the time we got to the, the final pit stops uh, in the race. But, you know, I, I, as you're seeing, we, I think it was a case that Ryan probably had the underlying pace, but Merfoss was doing a, a great job at defending and they were just, you know, nose to tail pretty much all the way through. And it was really interesting to watch uh, as, you know, I was in the race in GT2, seeing them come past and they were so close together all the time. It was really interesting to watch, but it kind of all uh, sorted itself out in this final pit stop phase. As you can see here, Ryan makes a pit stop late into the race on lap 40 and he puts in enough, uh, for, uh, enough good laps such that a few laps down the road when Merfoss makes his pit stop, Ryan is able to come out in first place. So that's Ryan taking the victory with Merfoss in second place for this one, and young Brighthawk after a, a bad start is able to take another podium in third with a good recovery. So now on to GT2, and there was trouble in the early stages for myself straight away. You know, I was in I started third place, and it looked like I was going to keep that third place uh, going into the first corner, and then I drift out wide a little bit and have a really weird hit on the prop which you know that was dude, unbelievable unbelievably unlucky I think and I end up in last place immediately 
EG252014 is able to keep the lead from pole position and GT Driver who is fighting for the championship with Brady, we're seeing those two perspectives in the bottom right, he has some early trouble as well, uh, initially holding fourth place just ahead of Brady but then uh, comes, to, comes together as Brady goes for the overtake, uh, hits the inside prop there and find himself at the back of the pack apart from you know myself who was in last place. So early on in the race at the start of lap two uh, EG makes a mistake from first place and uh, loses that first place so that puts EG Axel who started second into the lead and Brady is able to get up into second place as well. Then Brady puts a move on AJ Axel to take the lead of the race and doesn't look back from that point on. He was never too far ahead of everybody else, Brady, but he, he did, just did a very consistent, very good race and stayed out of the trouble that was going on behind because it's fair to say that there was quite a bit of trouble going on behind. It was quite a tasty battle over second place. There was lots of changing of positions, but ultimately it, it got kind of all came to a head at this point where I had done a pretty good recovery from being last to get up into second here but then I ended up uh, getting run out wide there put into the the wall and it, it, it just capitulates for me from there I had a typical PS4 GT2 LSGP nightmare that I normally have in the, every MCC season uh, I, I you know I, I, that gives the the thing that you just saw there gives Sherrett second place, and he never uh, never looks back from that second place. My teammate runs wide there, knocks over a lamppost that I end up hitting. I end up finishing in sixth place after a total nightmare capitulation race. Ultimately, Brady takes the win with Sherrett not too far behind with some good pace in second. And AG Axel takes home a third place that he would then lose to a penalty, which gives that the penalty for the incident that you saw pushing me into the wall. And that gave AG 25-2014 uh, the third place. So it was a, quite a hectic race behind Brady over second place. And obviously, if you want to see it in more detail and how it all came together, uh, you can you can check the the live coverage which is down below in the description so ps4 gt3 there was a really really bad start for our main champ one of our main championship contenders shady fruit as we'll see in the, the bottom right hand corner of the screen uh, started in last place but then has a has a nightmare coming into the right hander here clips the inside loses a lot of time and basically his race is left to try and recover what he can from that he does recover to finish fourth but it, that was kind of made it guaranteed that the gt3 championship wouldn't be decided in this round obst does the same thing for in gt3 that his teammate in gt2 did and and uh, hits the barrier from the lead of the race and then it's uh it's a basically a fight between the other championship contender diglett with DJ Matt. First of all, Horst gets into the uh, the lead as we see here, but then gets taken out by a GT1. That gives DG, G, DJ Matt the lead, and then Diglett, who is uh, fighting for the championship alongside Shady Fruit, was following him close by in second. Um, and the, the 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 race was again kind of decided by the pit stop phase. By the time. Uh, Diglett makes an earlier pit stop and by the time that DJ Matt comes and makes his Diglett is able to take over the lead of the race and doesn't look back from that point on so Diglett takes a, a very good win which puts him level on points with Shady Fruit in the championship as we'll see and that makes it a very interesting final round DJ Matt takes an excellent uh, excellent uh, second place and then Obst does a good recovery to get third place which gives a good haul of points for the Richards Majestic team alongside Ryan winning the race and AG finishing in third place in his own race in GT2 as well. So it's quite interesting with the, the GT2 championship and GT3 specifically for PS4 both level on points the two championship contenders so round 8 is going to be very interesting and uh, and for the team's championship, that good haul of points that Richard's Majestic have got give them a seven-point lead in the championship going into the final round, and we'll see if they can hold on for that with Preservex not too far behind. 
So Xbox One GT1, I was actually racing in this one. Uh, I was reserving for uh, GT, GT1 Season 4 and Season 5 Champion King Blaze, and I get a really good start. Obviously, I know I've got big shoes to fill. I'm never going to be as quick as Blaze, but I, obviously I raced, in, uh, I raced in the PC race for GT3, and I wanted to get an experience of GT1 as well, uh, which I hadn't done since Season 3. So... Artwix DJ holds the lead for, for a while after uh, after the start and, and as you see there Trumpet and Baggins have a coming together in the early stages uh, and it kind of uh, in, in the early stages it was a, a decent little train with three cars together then another three cars then another three cars so that was quite interesting to see uh, I'm sort of fighting with Specky Legend and uh, uh, Shoot Gun they have a coming together and that gives me one position there and then I'm able to get ahead of Specky Legend as well to get myself up into fourth place and then Artwex DJ unfortunately from the lead of the race and he was you know having a good good run uh, in first place he has technical issues with uh, with his game capture oh, also John Boy makes a little bit of a mistake there that gives uh, that gives Smooth JD Ron Driver second place at that point and then Artwex DJ has technical issues with his uh, with his recording software, it means he has to pull off to the side of the road, as you can see there on the right hand side, and then ultimately can't continue in the race and has to has to leave. So that was that put me into third place, which I wasn't really expecting coming into the race. Uh, John Boy goes for an earlier pit stop there, that puts me into second place, and at this point I knew that. I wasn't going to be winning the race because Trumpet, who had obviously the early incident, he'd made an early pit stop as well. And you know, based on the gaps that I was seeing, you can see Trumpet right behind me there on the left-hand side. He he was one pit stop ahead essentially. He'd already made a pit stop, so I knew that when I made my first pit stop, I'm going to come out behind, and in all likelihood, Trumpet was going to go on to win the race. He had the best pace, but. I didn't want to, to make that pit stop because I wanted to try and get ahead of Smooth JD to lead a, 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 a multi-class endurance race overall for the first time since Season 3 Round 9, just to have that experience, even if it was from, uh, from pit stops. But Smooth JD never actually made a pit stop and he did very well to hold the lead for so long. And then I spied an opportunity here to get an overtake done on track, not actually through pit stops, and I managed to get up into the lead of the race and I was so happy even though that it was because of pit stops and I knew that I wasn't going to be winning the race with Trumpet you know still a pit stop ahead of me it didn't matter to me I was just enjoying the experience of fighting at the front and being in the lead overall lead of a multi-class endurance championship race and that that was just an experience that I'm going to you know look back on at this season and cherish so yeah, I was I was having a really good race. I was really enjoying it, and I just enjoyed these laps that I had out in front. And I was just enjoying being in first place for maybe about 15 minutes or so until I made my first pit stop. At that point, Trumpet had already made two pit stops, so he was ahead of me, and I came out in third place behind John Boy, who'd also made two pit stops. So those two were pretty much locked in for uh, first and second places, and I knew that you know I, w I was never going to be coming first or second it was going to be lower down than that I didn't think because you know I, I still had another pit stop to make I didn't even think I'd be keeping third place but when I did make my final pit stop my second pit stop late in the race with only two laps to go I came out in third place and that was quite a surprise but it wasn't going to be an easy run to the line because I had Baggins who had that early incident with Trumpet right behind me after he'd made some early pit stops and he was recovering as well but I crucially managed to get a, a decent overtake on the GT2 car of Ferrugia going onto the final lap of the race. As you saw, Baggins was right there from the spectator cam right behind me. And that was a that was crucial because it allowed me to get ahead go on the back straight. And I didn't lose time trying to get past Ferrugia in the corners as Baggins did. So ultimately Trumpet was able to come home in the lead of the race, taking another win. John Boy had a great second place. And I got a podium just ahead of Baggins, and that was kind of amazing to me. Uh, and, and given how this season has gone, and how I've kind of felt down about myself at certain times, 
looking back on this season this is a race that I'm probably going to cherish and the fact that I managed to get a podium in each GT, GT1, GT2 and GT3 on each platform as well that's just you know that that's something that I'm really gonna uh, really gonna cherish when I look back on this season and uh, it's certainly something that I didn't expect coming into this GT1 race so I, I was really happy about that but in terms of Xbox One GT2 we've got our two championship contenders are G Ross and Charlie Addo G Ross got into an early lead with uh, with Charlie Addo basically following him through the field gets up ahead of PP performance there into second and then is able to uh, overtake for the lead here as well and those two start to battle it out um, alongside Jetta who, who's also come on pretty well later on in the season and there was basically a, a three-way battle as you can see these three going around here now in the end we don't have an awful lot of footage from that because the main footage that we have is from G Ross and he was at the head of that battle but they were all pretty close all the way through but in the end G Ross was able to hold on ahead of Jetta after a great fight with Charlie actually fading away in the later stages and losing third place to old boy blue eyed Malice who'd never been too far away from the leaders during this battle and that sets up a very interesting final race in terms of the GT2 championship as we'll see in round 8. Now in GT3 unfortunately RJ Slow once again disconnected, that's his second disconnection of the season at least this time it wasn't you know 60 minutes into the race but that basically handed the championship to major copyright before the race had even started. Those were the two championship contenders and that disconnection from RJ Slow meant that uh, major copyright would take the championship. Uh, for Xbox One GT3 with one round to go and that's obviously a bit of a shame because it does cost us a, a close fight down to the wire for the GT2 championship and the team's championship as well which was affected by that because Ron were right in there with Globo but it was also a great job by copyright this season and he's certainly a worthy winner it just would have been nice to have that battle go down to the wire but in the early laps of the race, Bar27 did pretty much the same thing as his fellow Richard's Majestic teammates had done and crashed out from the lead of the race in pretty much the same corner as uh, his GT, GT3 PS4 teammate, Obst. Uh, and that left uh, Recited in the lead with RDT close by in second and the rest of the pack not too far away as well coming onto the, the first lap. Now... RDT and Recited were able to pull out a bit of a gap to the rest in front but then RDT makes a mistake and manages to hold on to second place which is important but obviously that loses him a lot of time but then he's able to catch back up to Recited and it becomes pretty clear that RDT has some great pace in this race. Now he catches up to Recited, stays in second place and eventually gets a very nice overtake on Recited down the back straight and doesn't look back from that point on. Copyright recovers from a bad start to finish in second place ahead of Recited who ends up in third but something to note is that this was actually RDT's first ever MCEC victory after having raced since season one of the championship back in 2014 and it's kind of crazy that you know it's it's it, it's, you know, six years later, he manages to get that first win, and it, it was a really good performance. You know, he he just led front once he got that overtake done. Uh, we obviously see here copyright getting ahead of recited and how that battle for second happened. But something that's interesting in this one is that uh, it's, there's three people in this race who've raced in the MCC since season one, and that's myself, Blue Eyed Malice, and RDT. We were racing together back in 2014 in season one of the championship on Xbox 360 and here we all are getting podiums in our respective classes in the same race in season five on Xbox One and it was just a really nice touch um, and RDT would actually end up being our final new winner of the season um, as we'll see in round eight. We, we all the all the winners in round eight have all been previous winners as well. So yeah, good performance there. We've got a tight championship battle in uh, GT2 still to be decided in the final race. I'll explain about that when we get to the round round eight video. And with RJ Slow's disconnections, unfortunately that drops Ron a little bit further back behind Global with an eleven point difference. And uh, yeah, again it was a shame that we were cost some 
tight championship fights with those disconnections, but you know, what can you do? So PC time now, and we had a battle pretty much throughout the entire race between our two championship contenders, that's Cleo and Darnock. They're at the top, top two spots in the championship, and throughout the course of the race, obviously in the early stages, they were standing sort of towards the back of the field in the on the grid, and they, they, they gradually work their way up the order. Uh, basically together, obviously they're fighting each other, but they've also got the underlying pace to uh, overtake the guys ahead of them, so they gradually make their way up the field and get into the top two spots. Uh, they, they actually get, they're in fourth and fifth initially, and then um, we have uh, coming together between Mindless Riff and Trumpet, who were leading, well, first and second places, going into the tunnel, and that puts King Blaze from the Xbox side uh, into the lead of the race with Cleo and Darnock behind. We'll see the footage of that uh, right about here. Obviously, are coming together there with Mindless Riff and Trumpet, and that puts them out. And then it's a, a Darnock gets ahead of Eric, and we've got a, a three-way fight between Blaze, Cleo, and Darnock at the head of the field going in the early laps. Now the early advantage goes to Cleo, who uh, obviously was in that second place when Blaze crashes into the inside barrier there and gets up into uh, the lead of the race. Darnock is able to capitalize on that as well to take second place, and then those two start driving away from the rest of the pack, never too far away. But obviously, 35 minutes into the race here, uh, 35 laps into the race, I should say here, you know, more than halfway into the race, Cleo gets held up by a GT3 car there going into the tunnel, and that gives Darnock an opportunity to get up into the lead, which he takes very well. Uh, they have it coming together, Cleo turns him around and has to uh, obviously wait and seed that position back again. So, but, you know, this is over, these are our two championship contenders fighting on track as well, and it was great to see. In the closing stages of the race, on lap 50 out of 57, we're getting to the, the very end of the race now, Cleo gets a really nice overtake up the inside going here to take over the lead of the race again and get, get that lead back. Uh, and it looked like Cleo was going to be able to take the victory, but then makes a mistake coming onto the, the final straight here, and that basically signaled that Darnock was going to take the win. Just one one little mistake like that, and uh, there's you know not enough laps left, there's only five laps left. Cleo was never going to be able to take that uh, take that position back. So Darnock takes the win, which makes it again a very interesting battle for the championship coming into the final round, with uh, Cleo in second place and Minus Riff having a good recovery after that early crash to take the final podium spot ahead of the G Xbox One GT1 regulars Blaze and Trumpet. So moving on to PC GT2, and we had Ducati Doctor in our top left get a really really good start and get up into the lead very early on and he held it having one of his best races uh, as the Richards Majestic GT2 also does the same thing that the Richards Majestic D GT2 did in the, in the PS4 race I just noticed and hit the inside barrier, uh, inside wall on the first corner but uh, yeah Ducati Doctor having one of his best races was in the lead from a very early time and was holding it quite well. Now behind him Odan would get up into second place and started to close in on the leader, the Cali Doctor, um, whilst the, basically we've got essentially four championship contenders in GT2 and they were all battling in the mid pack. Uh, I, guess, I guess you could say that they were all sort of slowing each other down in the early stages as well, but Odan was able to break away from that pack by getting a nice double overtake uh, going into the, the, the left-hander here as CT Ski ends up coming together in the, the wake of that overtake and dropping sort of further back down the order. Odan gets up into second and starts putting pressure on the leader, Ducali Doctor. But then unfortunately, Ducali Doctor suffers a complete failure of all of his USB devices, causing him to drop from the lead of the race to about 50 seconds behind second last position, which was a big shame. You know, he's in last place, 50 seconds behind even eighth place. It was a big shame after such a great start and a great performance in the early stages. Now, CT Ski made an early pit stop, as you just saw there, after struggling to get through some of the other drivers early on. And then after that point, he went on to another level and just was so quick and so consistent for the next 20 or so minutes he climbed up to second place as other drivers pitted ahead of him 
before rolling up to the back of Ordan and ultimately overtaking him for the lead of the race, taking his second win of the season with Ordan not too far behind uh, in, in second place. But it was just a really, really solid performance from Tsitiski. The rest of the field were quite far back from the two of them and uh, the best of the rest in that respect was Mountain Jed. And with Danny Anni finishing in fifth place after Benimi had one of his best races to take fourth, the GT2 drivers who were fighting for the championship basically finished in reverse championship order, setting up a remarkable finish in which four drivers could take the championship in the final round. Meanwhile though, despite being around 50 seconds behind on even eighth place, the Caddy Doctor refused to give up after having his issues, and after a race in which I've never seen anyone work harder for a single point, managed to catch up that 50 second deficit over the course of the race to PJ, who was in 8th place, getting an overtake in the final few laps to finish 8th rather than 9th. And that extra point that he got for doing that would end up being incredibly important as we'll see in round 8's video. It's a really good uh, not giving up performance from Ducati Doctor there. Now PC GT3, beta 1 hit for in our top left position, had a really good start from 3rd place and got into the lead relatively early, overtaking Daleks who had held from pole position. And then he was able to pull a decent gap from that point on whilst battles were going on behind, especially over 2nd place. There was a quite an interesting battle over 2nd throughout the course of the race because we had Daleks who were seeing battling with uh, with Beta 1 hit in the early stages. He was obviously in second place after Beta 1 hit manages to get ahead as we'll see in a short while. We had Large Soda who was uh, in third place and then Berserker in, uh, in fourth place and it was basically the three of them battling over second place in the race. Now Beta 1 hit and Berserker are our two championship contenders. They've basically finished in the top two in almost every race uh, this season in GT3, so it's very close between them in the championship. So, as we see, uh, Large Soda, first of all, is able to get ahead of Daleks as he has a coming together with a, a GT2 car, and then Berserker is able to do the same uh, and get ahead of Daleks as well. And that leaves Berserker and Large Soda then fighting over second place. And they had quite a good battle for quite a long time throughout the race which ended up being decided through pit stops as quite it seems like quite often that is the case uh berserker seemed to have the pace but obviously getting past is quite difficult obviously you can see them there being uh, very close together berserker makes a, a pit stop uh, thinks he's you know the, the idea being that he's going to try and put in a quick lap and by the time large soda comes in and makes his pit stop this is, these are the final pit stops of the race as well, two mandatory pit stops every race. He, he was hoping that he'd be able to come out ahead, but that was made an awful lot easier because Large Soda ended up getting taken out by Ordan GT2 car. Uh, obviously Ordan waited for that and, and did the right thing, but that doesn't help Large Soda because then by the time Large Soda makes his final pit stop, Berserker was able to uh, take that second place quite easily. So. In the end, Beta 1 hit, ran out a, a good winner, actually got caught up by Berserker in the late stages and faded a little bit, but was able to uh, was able to hold on for that first place and take another victory, uh, with Berserker finishing in second place uh, and Large Soda taking the final podium spot with another good race. So in terms of the GT2 champion, in terms of all the championships on PC, it's actually all to play for. GT2 in particular, we've got four drivers who can win the championship basically by winning the last race. It's pretty interesting to, to see. And then just like the PS4 GT3 championship, we've got the top two in the GT3 championship on PC on level points. So it's very interesting going into round eight. And the top two in the team's championship are also level on points on PC. So absolutely remarkable how close it is with the team's championship on PC uh, and any of the top three teams could take it. In terms of the overall championship, it's going to take a massive upset at this point for Globe Oil not to take that overall team's championship, which takes into account all the points on all the platforms. They've done really well this season and it's basically just a formality for them uh, to, to close it out in the final race. So that's pretty much it for round 5 of the Multiclass Endurance Championship Season 5. You can either keep up with the championship live each weekend on Twitch 
or just wait until the next episode of these highlight videos and as I said you can watch the full uninterrupted coverage from each of the races with spectating and commentary for Xbox One and PC plus my race alongside the footage from other drivers for PS4 with the live stream videos as well. All of the links for those as well as any other info that you may need about the championship can be found down below in the video description and pinned comment. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.